Hello and welcome. Today we'll be looking at a beta version of Spark AR Studio uh, to look at what upcoming changes may happen. Uh, bear in mind this is quite speculative because obviously it's a beta at the point of me making this video. Uh, and this is looking at the version that will be uh, that you can access now on Windows devices, but also some of the slight tweaks and changes that are happening in the process of creating augmented reality experiences and the interface itself. So first thing you'll notice is we've updated um, the UI here on the welcome screen. Dark shade. Uh, with the uh, kind of getting started option is currently not available here. So whether that'll be in the released version of this, we don't know. Um, other than that, this is largely the same. There's now a little go to community tab where you can go and join um, the Facebook groups and uh, online forums uh, where people can share their blocks and skills with each other. Uh, our previous UI, you'll notice this is quite drastically different. For one, uh, you'll find that the file, edit, view, insert, project, etc. are within the window rather than at the top of your search bar on the Mac. This is to keep it more consistent with the Windows interface, I believe. Um, and it will take, it can get take some getting used to for those who are more familiar with the way that Mac operates. Another thing that's changed is our workspace video pause and restart options are no longer up here in the middle. They're now on our left hand side alongside our mirror, export, report and documents options. If I go to workshop and click on there, we have the set, well, before we have the console and the patch editor. If we go to video, we can still use our inbuilt webcam and the prefab video clips. Pause and restart work exactly the same as previously. Uh, our mirror still works the same with us connect to, as long as we connect our phone and have the Spark AR app connected to our device, we can still mirror. And our export window has got a slight update where it kind of now tells us to kind of on device size, download size, and the recommended kind of limits, which is quite nice to see now. If we look within our scene, uh, you notice that this is again hasn't changed a huge amount, but we have this new option down here called Add to Scene, where if I click on that, this brings up our little um, library. It's a little bit glitchy, I will say. So uh, first off, you'll notice we have our face tracker, which is exactly the same as it was before. We have plane tracker, which used to be the way we used to do also do targets. Now you'll notice we have a new option called target tracker. Now target tracker is now separate to plane tracker. Plane tracker is now if you want them to augment across a floor or table. And our target tracker is what will basically be detected when an image is seen. So it's now important to note that these are now two separate trackers rather than the plane tracker trying to cover both areas. Hand tracker works exactly the same as before. Plane, null, 3D objects and face mesh are largely the same. Uh, if I go up to here and I right click and go to insert, you'll notice we have some new icons. So the face mesh now has a little face mesh, obviously, icon. Um, if I just insert our target tracker for a second, just to sort of show the difference. So when our target tracker is inserted, you will notice we still have the option to select our texture. We have a new little UI here that tells us how to look around, although this was here before, now it seems to be default uh, loading up. Uh, gone is the kind of preview type that we used to have up here. Now if we want to change our device scale, within this little preview window we can simply click on this little drop down here and select our desired device type from within the preview window rather than as a separate drop down. This is a quite a welcome addition. We also have the option here to switch between front and back camera and to rotate our device. If we click at the top up here, we still have the option to simulate touch alongside also rotate our device in various degrees. 
the move, rotate, and scale options are the same. If we go to our interactions on our camera, you can notice we have our producer patch, so we can still create our little additions. Uh, again, everything largely is the same, it's just a little bit uh, cleaner. So if we go to our assets down here, you can see if we go to add to assets, we can still import from our computer, still create materials. Uh, we can also now create scripts within the asset panel itself rather than to, having to drag them in in a kind of workabout way. There's also some environmental texture presets, which were again in there before, but now they're a bit easier to find. If we go to our project settings up here, you notice that this is still the same, but this is now within the same window rather than kind of giving us this window within uh, window view, which is a bit nicer. So we can still see our background, which wasn't the case before. We can still download our face assets if we require to. If we go to our patch editor here and we right click we can now insert our um, scripts uh, our patches and instead of it now being all in one large list we now have it segmented into uh, its appropriate types so whereas we used to have animation and everything in animation underneath it and then audio and then everything underneath that we now have animation and the sub patches linked to that So if I'm just going to insert us a face mesh, like so, into our scene, I'm just going to change this to give us a person, like so. So now we can see our face mesh is still applied. If I just now get to my face mesh and I want to adjust, let's say, the visibility, uh, instead of it now being a little circle next to our uh, patchable objects or areas, we now have this little arrow, which makes it a little bit more clearer, I believe, to actually understand um, what they do. So if I was to click on this little yellow arrow here, this now adds in our visibility patch. We now have a little configure button down here where we can comment it and edit it if it had other options. So we can still do our screen tap, insert, and from our tap option, which is highlight anything that's interactable is now as bright blue. And I can simply link that to our visibility like so, and it will automatically add it in our switch. So now if I was to go and simulate touch now, you can see it works exactly the same as before. Uh, it just looks a little bit different. So please bear that in mind. Uh, this does mean that some of the previous tutorials um, may need to be re-updated and redone in the future um, but please bear in mind that largely the process will be the same it's just that the interface is likely going to be different and that is the kind of current state of things so what do I currently think of this beta slash updated Spark AR Studio well I personally prefer having a dark UI uh, it just makes reading text and the kind of visual look a lot cleaner. Um, and I also quite like the updates to the patch editor. It does seem to make more sense and it follows uh, other programs' uh, aesthetic style more closely. Um, and there's also now the option to create blocks, uh, which you can then export and share with the community, which is fantastic. So please uh, bear in mind, and I will probably try to do future videos uh, using the beta software or this updated software once it's released. However, please bear in mind that this beta software currently does not work on the latest version of macOS, nor does it work on uh, 12.4 whatever. So it's very limited in terms of what macOS devices this beta will actually run on. 
So I will be probably continuing doing videos using the current version of Spark AR uh, up until this beta UI is implemented into the finished product. So thank you for watching, like and subscribe.